Okay. All right. View gallery full screen. That's what the hell I don't know. Okay. Hello, folks. Guess you got a test coming up on Friday, but let's um let's do something here. Let's do an example. Screen share. Screen share. What do I have to launch meeting? No, 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 that's not this one. Yeah. Screen share. Okay. Um, All right. Here is a linear algebra and electric circuit. Let's let's do a problem. This is this document as it stands is um, in the Canvas site under Mat. It's under MATLAB linear algebra files. So you can get this part of it to work with here. You don't have to copy all this down. Okay. So. That's under files, MATLAB, linear algebra. And it's called the electric circuit or something. It's called what's well, called the Wheatstone Bridge Electric Circuit. Okay, so here it is. What's happening is that you have this arrangement of resistors, and you take a battery, you take a applied voltage source, and you put it on there, and zzz, electricity starts to flow. This particular arrangement is called a Wheatstone Bridge. You don't have to know that, just like you don't have to know someone's name, I guess. But this is the way the current comes here. It splits between this, these two legs, the resistor. It's got a, one coming across here and can go down these two and come back here. So you have currents in all the stages here. You have currents in um, across resistor one. You have resist across resistor two, across resistor three, four, five, and then the, the combined come in six. So you have basically the, the system itself is this set of resistors. That would be the system parameters. The forcing function is applied voltage. If you take that battery out of there, it's just like a, your computer with no power to it. It's just, just a bunch of components sitting like a paperweight. But you flip the switch or stick the battery in there and then there you go. You get some electrical stuff here. Okay, our objective. Uh, I was messing with this earlier uh oh last night oh, oh good i didn't change that because there's going to be six unknown currents and i won't tell you why anyway whatever <laughs> okay um so anyway there's six unknown currents our objective is given the other parameters r1 r2 etc and the applied voltage to solve for the six unknown currents. Now, if you were taking, you know, a mechanical engineering course in your circuit thing or whatever, they you're supposed to derive the equations and all that stuff. So in this course, since you're at the sophomore level, may not have had seen this or haven't had the necessary courses, I will supply you with the physics. That won't be supplied to you in your later courses. Just, just like the heat transfer problem, if we do something in heat transfer, or electric circuits or mechanical, I, like in the uh, homework problem, I gave you the mechanical equations because you're at the sophomore level. If, if this was at the senior level, I would not give you these things here. You're supposed to know how to do those, but here they are. You have two vases, and this gives you a good, uh, this, uh, this is good for you because you get to uh, you review these um, electrical circuit principles. You got the Kirchhoff's voltage law around each loop, which says that the sum of the voltages around a closed loop are zero because you get back to the same spot, same voltage. And then also conservation of charge. That tells you that the summation of the incoming charges and the summation is equal to the summation of the outgoing charges. This is like a balance. If, electric, if electrons are flowing at a certain rate into that junction, the amount that flow in have to be the amount that flow out or else where did they go? Where are the magic electrons that are not accounted for into the ether of the universe? So those are the two basic principles in electric circuit theory, the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the Kirchhoff's current law, something that's called um, whatever, K, V, L, and, and whatever. All right, so here we go. You have three loops in this particular circuit, one, two, three. So let's go around them. Around the big loop here, you have the voltage gain, the voltage rise because of the battery, that's V. It goes through this current, this resistor, this resistor, all right? You know, you have a voltage drop across a resistor 
Ri. So you have a voltage drop of, of minus Ri there, of, of in resistor four, it's minus R, Ri through that one. Okay, because you know, uh, the, you have to also know that the voltage drop across a resistor is R times the current. Okay, so that's this loop. The second loop, and I'm, I'm, I'm by choice going, uh, what's that, clockwise. You could have gone counterclockwise, everything's negative. Just like in a mechanical problem, you can choose the coordinate X, positive up, positive down, or anything, whatever you wish. So I'm just going to go all these as um, clockwise loops around these, these things. So starting here, going clockwise, there's a voltage drop. I1, R1. Where, where the heck is this? Oh. Well, that said, it looks like it went counterclockwise, but anyway. Um, so there's, there's, there's a voltage drop across this one because I've got the current going this, facing this way, you see? Now, I've got this cu current pointing that way, so there's actually a voltage rise across three, you see? Similarly with two, there's a voltage drop. Now, you might say, well, you see I3, you've got it pointing that way, but what if it's the opposite direction? Well, our solution will give I3 is equal to negative something or another, which is not like a violation, like negative charge. It's meaning that the charge, the current flow, that the current, which is charge flow rate, is equal to the value you saw, but the arrow is pointing the wrong direction. It's like in a statics or dynamics problem. If you solve for an unknown force, and the force turns out to be minus 20 newtons, that there's nothing wrong physically. That just means that the magnitude's 20 newtons, but it's pointing in the opposite direction to your arrow on your piece of paper. So I chose a direction here. If it's wrong for a specific case, the I3 will show it, and the things will show it. Um, okay, similarly now, third loop here, it's, uh, let's see, voltage drop across, it looks like I'm gonna go on this direction. There's a voltage drop across four, voltage rise across five, and a voltage rise across three because of the directions of the arrows. So there is Kirchhoff's voltage law applied around the three different loops. You can, if you have no, if you have just oodles of other electrical components, you can continue doing this thing for you know, all your hundred components. The conservation of charge law starting to apply. Now I6, if you don't have any way to get in or out, I6 has to be over this whole thing because you know, over this whole wire and battery here, there's no place for I6 to go and there's no other inlet ports, you see. But nevertheless, I6 is I1 plus I2. Um, at this junction here, I2 plus I3, mm -hmm. I2 plus, I3, that must have been over here, equals I4, yeah, I, I2 and 3 is 4, and uh, down at this one, I1 and I5, have to, I1 has to equal 3 and 5, and etc. here. Now, in other words, you can just do your conservation of charge. Make sure you pay attention to the arrows that have been drawn. That's why out of this one, I1 is negative. That's why in this thing, I2 is positive. Incoming things, incoming money, you add to your checking account. Outgoing money, you take away. It's a checkbook balance. If you mistakenly, if you write a big old check and you mistakenly, instead of taking it away, you add it, and then you start writing a bunch of bad checks, you can say, oh, Mr. Banker, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Can I have part credit? Do you know that bankers don't have a very good sense of humor when you try to take their money? No, no, you write a bad check, you bouncy, bouncy. There's no sense of humor there. There's no part credit. So same thing here. And actually, you know, back in the old days when I could collect paper and look at it as part credit, but MATLAB, the, Matlab, the, grade, the Canvas grade tool is kind of like a banker. You get it wrong, you get it wrong. But I did this and I did that and I'm a good person and I, I donate to, to, to the civic causes, you know, they don't care. 
When it comes to money, people don't care. I can give you that too. And so this is an energy balance, so please look at these. Now, these supply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equations for six unknowns. One of the subtle things is that only, th only three of the four of these are linearly independent. You can, you can, because they're basically, there's only really three unique ones. So you can, you can eliminate any of these you want from the, from the mix. So for instance, let's just not use the last one because this last one's saying the same thing as the other three. Okay. Like I showed you in my little example last time, if you take an equation and multiply it by two, it's not a unique piece of information. So what we're gonna do is use the, these, these three and the first three of these, and we're gonna use them to put together a linear algebra set of equations to solve for the unknown currents. The objectives, and drawing is difficult here, but little cause and effect. The, the system inputs are the resistors, the forcing function is the voltage, and the output is the current. But we will write a little function m file. We're gonna write a function m file where the resistor values come in, and, I've, and they've been asked, <clears throat> I've asked you to do it as a vector. You could certainly type them each one. I like it this way because um, some students, they would prefer to just type in the five numbers, and that's maybe okay for this. But what if your electric circuit had thousands of resistors? If you want to type, you know, it's good to load them from a data file in as a, as a matrix. You know? This obviously, some of you, many of you will be working on much more complex electric circuits and having to deal with them. Um, and the voltage. So I want two inputs. A voltage, which is a scalar, it's a single number, and five numbers that represent resistance. And this function should solve for the six currents and return them as a vector. Then I want you to write a driver file, a driver code, that is an orchestrating program that uses these particular case studies. And then I want you to use your M function M file to study the effect of voltage. I want, I want currents versus voltage on the same graph. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's get, let's get with the program here. Oops. I, well, I don't think I was going to use that problem. I mean, oh God, that was good. Could you go back to that one? No. <laughs> All right. Okay. This one is going to be called, well, okay. A wheat. I guess I don't care how to spell it really now. Wheat stone, wheat stone, stone bridge. The what? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to save this. Um, the Wheatstone Bridge. Yeah, Wheatstone Bridge circuit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to file. I'm going to save as. Save as. I'm going to save it back into that same directory. Uh, I'll save it into. Here's your class. I've got your class. I hope you should uh, organize here. There's your class. There's your MATLAB stuff. There's linear algebra. And I want to save it as wheat stone ridge. Save. There it is. Okay. Now. Let's see. I guess I, I guess I should have. Um, I want this to be a function, so I guess I didn't need to put that there at this point. That's going to be the orchestrating program. Um, uh, we can keep that there, though. What I want to do is a function. Func function. The output are the currents. You know, 
Good stone bridge of voltage and R. I have to make a lot of spaces in here, see what I'm doing. The objective of this thing Let me see if it changes and makes it look like a function once I save it. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is form a, a little function that takes these things in and returns the currents. Then I want to make a driver file called maybe Wheatstone Bridge Driver that sets the cases and runs the cases. But this is the little tool behind the scene. So I'm going to need to. Form the A matrix. Suppose we can do anything. Form the matrix. And then I want to solve. Mm -hmm. Now, what I've done here is very bad. I'm a bad boy today. I'm a bad boy every day. What I'm doing is going right to MATLAB, pecking away. I want the solution. Why do I want the solution? Because Professor Vick said I had to, and I'm going to fail the course without it. A very poor reason to do things. I haven't done my homework. I haven't, I haven't like analyzed the problem yet. So I really need to go back to pencil and paper. And this is one of the situations I've always wished I was in the classroom in front of you, where I could take, let's stop. I would go with the overhead thing and pick my pencil and start to derive these equations, right? You need to do your pencil and paper. You can't just start pecking away at MATLAB when you're not sure what it is you're going to solve. So what we need to do carefully is set up the six simultaneous equations that we need. So I'm not very good at writing here, but um, why can't I? Is this solution? This isn't active. This thing. I, I don't. I think we need to view only. I want to view. Oh, view. Edit document. Okay. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to say I want to. I want to do. So, I want to change this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. There you go. Solution. Spelling of solution, but who cares? Or maybe you could call this analysis. Bold underline. Now we need to set up a six by six. A six by six A matrix and a and a and a, and a, a right hand side. So let's derive the equations here. Now, I'm not good with the drawing tools, but I tell you what, one thing I'm good with, one of my best things, one thing I am is reasonably organized. And as a result, in Microsoft Word, one one of my best. Hmm. Is the tool. Well, I thought I was good at table making. I don't know. There, that's what usually comes up. Let's see. The A matrix, the I matrix equals the B matrix. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six lines of it, right? Is that six or is that five? Okay. So we're going to have. We're going to have the A matrix times the current matrix equals the B matrix. And I need really, uh, I really need six columns here. Hold on here. Let's think what we're going to need. We're, the A matrix, the A matrix is going to require, um, six by six and then i tell you what let's, let's start this again let's think about this leave the table let's form the a matrix a a is one two three four five six X, this current equals, it. let's do this one, six by six. One, two, three, one, is that six or five? I can't count anyway. We'll make a new row there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the A matrix, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
This is going to be the current matrix, current one. This damn thing makes I's in the capitalized bastard. I, I'm, I'm not going to take the time to make subscripts, okay? But you know, you, you, got it. you know what is going on here. This is going to be the I matrix, I one. Copy, paste, paste, paste. I1, I2, how do you stop it to make capitals? Is Bastard. Okay, make capitals then if you want. I can't stop it from making capitals. Mysteries of the universe. Make capitals. I know there's something going to stop it. There are the six currents. One, two, three, four, five, six currents equal the B's. I got too many rows here, so let's delete a row. Delete a column. Okay, so this is going to be, or should we leave an extra one? Anyway, this is going to be the A matrix in here, and that's going to be the B matrix. Let us copy and paste right in front of our faces so we can see them clear. I don't want to have to go be, 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 be back and forth, okay? I want to go like this. Back and forth, Bob, drives me nuts. Everything drives me nuts, actually. So maybe we'll do this as, as all centered. Yeah, anyway. Centered, and center. And, um, So how should we do this anyway? Because this is gonna be the A matrix, and I know it doesn't look right, you know. Or you could do the A matrix equals so. So these are gonna be row one, that's gonna be row two. So in the A matrix, like voltage is known, so you would rearrange this equation with these on the other side of the equation, and you'd have for coefficients, I1 would be a zero, I2 would be R2, a zero, and R4, five and six, and the other side would be voltage. Um, insert a column to the right. All right. So times the A matrix times the I matrix equals the right hand side matrix. So does everybody understand the first equation? I took it and I rearranged it as that. All right, that's how I got the first equation. R2 multiplies I2. This little big I just is annoying as hell. I can do this. All right, see the first equation? Second equation, we might as well just leave it the way it is. R1 minus R2, R3, zero, zero, zero. Right-hand side is a zero. I mean, I think what you could do on this is like, um, put a big box around it to make sure that's, you know, it's, it's not, not gonna look right, but top left box. Um, anyway, I'll fool around boxes. Y'all understand what I'm trying to do here? I'm, and I'm trying to type this in. I'm, I'm trying to make a, a, who knows what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get through this stupid education with the Zoom. Okay, minus R3, minus R4. 
this is actually, if you could, if you could have a nice way to put the boxes around the matrix, it's actually a very nice way to do this because it's it's organized in its rows and columns and, and you just visualize what I'm doing here, right? Like if you make a little, you know, there's drawing tools, wait a minute, insert. Shapes or something. Yeah. I'm not going to take your time, but you know, you could you could put the little boxes around and stuff like that. Okay, so there's those three equations. Now we need to input these three equations. Copy. I want I'm just copying and pasting them because I just don't want to keep flipping back and forth between the other page. Okay. There's a little gap there. Okay, the first equation, you'd have to really arrange it as minus minus equals zero. So range that way, it would be like a minus one, uh, uh, minus one, uh, zero, 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 one equals a nothing. Similarly over here, minus equals zero. This would be a, a zero a one, a one, a minus one, a zero and a zero. And the last one, minus, minus equals zero. You'd have a one, zero, minus one, zero. Minus one, zero. There you go. Okay. Um, I know one thing you can do about these things is to um, is to uh, hold on real quick here. Um, borders and shadings. Uh, box around the whole thing. Yeah, okay, but anyway, I, I'm gonna go back to the other way. There we go. Does everybody see what I'm trying to do here? Using the tools, I'm trying to make a matrix. A, I equals the right hand side. A times the current equals B. I now need to translate this to MATLAB. I need to put the A matrix in, that's this. I need to put the B matrix in, that's that, it's a vector. And then I need to solve for those six things right there. So, uh, going back and forth, let's see. Can I get both up on the same page? Because otherwise I'm gonna make all sorts of mistakes. Uh, there, well, not quite good enough. There, okay. So you see, I need to form, oh crap. Anyway, um, I'm gonna drive myself nuts jerking around back and forth between those two things. Let's see, can I make this thing partial? Okay, there we go. What I'm just trying to do is I want both up on the screen at the same time because when you're yanking back and forth between the thing, it's gonna, a lot of chance for error. Plus, it just drives me crazy. So that's the biggest reason, okay. There we go. A, so some space in here, equals the first row. Now, R is going to come in as a vector. So your first row is going to be a zero. And R, the second one, zero. Oops, R, the second one. R, the fourth one, zero, zero. Now, you need to go to a new row. And I've talked about this before. Some programmers and some people just have a stream of consciousness. It just drives me crazy. Go to a new row. So you can see what you're doing. So you have a better chance of getting it right. So you have a better chance of getting a better grade. So you have a better chance 
of going to your design group when you're making a big salary and not embarrass yourself in front of a bunch of professional engineers, which I hope the pride of it would be more important than the money. Why not? This is America. You don't care. Okay. So we're trying to type these things in. Zero, zero, minus R, P, minus R, I guess I could copy and paste those things, but then change it. Would that be easier? I don't know, I'll just type them. Um, R, five, and zero, semicolon, new line, minus one, minus one, not, not, one, two. You see all the tight, see all the, the translating you got to do here. I mean, if you're going, I don't know, just, I don't know, live your life your own way, but you know, I'm not going to go to your apartment and check your closet and make sure it's organized, but I would suggest you organize it. One, zero, minus one, zero, minus one, zero, close parentheses. Now, Okay. Let's, before we go on, um, you know, I've never made errors before, but some of you all do. So let's check this. Zero R2, zero R400. Zero, zero. Let's make sure they're the same. Uh, R1 minus R2, R3, zero, zero, zero. O3. Zero, zero, minus R3, minus R4, okay. Row five, row four. Row six and row seven. I think those are okay. Well, what we're gonna do is form a, um, a Wheatstone Bridge driver here, you know? Um, so we, we, let's, let's start, let's form the driving program right now. Cut. This description, it's a word circuit. And I think if you put it there, it'll come up. Um, we're gonna have to form a new one. And um, all right. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna input the parameters. And, and solve using our tool. So we need, if you look in the problem statement, there were some things like uh, the R is all equal to one and stuff like that. Let's, let's see, voltage, let's start to put in the first case because we have to do it anyway. The R's, if they're all the same number, you can, it's, it's easy to put them in as like a ones, a um, five by one. Okay, and I want to file save as. I want it back in that other file. Um, you know what I can do to get there? Well, okay. I want to go back to that same file. Now lab grader. Oops. Eh. I have so many directories and subdirectories. Could you imagine me without directories and subdirectories? It wouldn't be pretty. There's the driver program. There's the special case program, okay? There. So what we have here is our tool, the Wheatstone Bridge. It's not finished. We, you know, we're not going on. We're going to test the A matrix first before we go on. I mean, we're not going to just put it all together and press return. We're testing the A matrix first. But what we're doing here is we're making a driver. We're making a a solver, and then we're going to solver there. We're making the solver, and then we're going to do the case studies, the driver, the orchestrating program to run the cases that our company's interested in to show our, you know, colleagues and bosses and stuff the results. So let's run this one. Let's run this to see if it works, to see what the A comes up with. 
when the hell's the run thing? If it's all crammed together now, I can't find it. Um, I'm gonna have to go back to the big thing. Um, editor, run, change folder. Good, I wanna do that to start with. Okay. Um, I don't think it worked right. Oh, all right, that's one, one, one. Oh, now I need to call on Wheatstone Bridge. See, I need to just call Wheatstone Bridge. It's gonna probably be an error because it doesn't have currents assigned. But let's see what Wheatstone Bridge does. And let's put in our standard house cleaning stuff. Clear the clear the directory and, and clear and all that stuff. Stuff out here. Okay, run. All right. To see it better, it's always best to if you to publish it, you can see it better if you want to. So we put in the R matrix and there they are. I think it would be more demonstrative to put in something different than ones to, to differentiate that. I think if we put in two times, I think if we did this way, we could clearly see where the R's are and where the ones are published. Okay, are the resistors ending up in the right places with the right magnitudes? Are the ones correct? I think they are, you see. So now we've tested the A matrix. The conclusion here is I think the A matrix is correct. Now we can go on to the B matrix. B, and, and this is, since this is correct, unless we want to see it again, let's semicolon the thing out of there. You might want to go back and look at it again, but generally you're not going to want to look at every detail of your 100 by 100 matrix of resistors. You're going to want the, the answers, you see. So, but in the debugging process, you can do this. Now B equals, and let's do our thing again. Now, this time I can remember what it was, a voltage and five zeros, okay? So it was a, it was the voltage and five zeros. Now, I think, I think you're gonna have to make it like a column or it's gonna crash. We could try it the other way. I think these have to be columns. One, two, three, four, five. I believe that that's going to be a column with V and five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. But just to make sure, let's run our code again. Let's run our little driver program with testing every step of the way. Publish. V is zero, zero, zero. I think, again, a better test would be to make sure, and I'm, this is probably going to work, to put 100 volts in there to make sure we get something different. I mean, some people might think I'm crazy doing this, but let me tell you something else. I get the dang thing right after a bunch of errors. So there you go, there's the B. It's got 105 zeros, that's what we want. Okay, we're making progress. I think now, I think now we're ready. Let's comment that one. I think we're ready to solve the thing. Okay, I think we're ready, ready to make the current equal to A backslash B. Because I think we've done our homework. We have meticulously derived the AX equals B. We've done a lot behind the scenes. We then put side by side to try to get these things in correctly. Again, I, I purposely started pecking away at MATLAB to show you that many students do that. I see them, they don't really think about what they're supposed to do. What they do know is they want to get this damn homework over with and want to get this out of their life. I mean, I know that's what they want, but some of them. <clears throat> but if you really want to get it right, I would suggest this, this laborious process I'm going through right now. All right, you ready? Let us comment that out. We know that's doing the right thing. Voltage. And let's put in um, there. So let's, let's, let's now solve it, see what we come up with. All right. We came up with 25, 25, 0, 25, 25, and 50 amps. That's in amps. 
professor? I think somebody's asking a question, but. Yeah. Oh, there um, I did my volume all the way down. Sorry about that. Yes, question? Uh, could you go back to the function file? Because I'm pretty sure I typed in the matrix wrong because I'm not getting. And so, you know, it's back and forth between the things and I open up my thing. So, so here's the fun. Let me, and let me summarize what I've done here. I have derived on pencil and paper or electronically very carefully the A matrix and the B matrix in the complete set. I then side by side attempted to type in accurately the B and the A, the B matrix and solved it. And I think I was able to do it with fewer errors than I usually make. Okay. I see my, my error, mistake, Professor. I just forgot a negative sign in there. Yeah, I, I think my, uh, my errors tend to come about when I'm um, distracted. So if I'm doing this by myself with, you know, without an audience, I tend to make less errors. When I'm talking to you guys and half paying attention to you, I have to. I mean, I'm, you, you're what's important here. You're the students. But so I, I make more errors. But that's good. Um, you see what it takes. Some students make a lot of errors and they think there's something wrong with them. Well, I guess there's something wrong with me, too, then, because I do the same thing. But I'm very meticulous about my derivations. I'm very meticulous about writing things down rows and columns and all the little details. You know? Now we can start to solve the problem. So <clears throat> let's see. Uh, there's our weak zone bring. Let's, let's put case one. Now remember the, let's put double parentheses on that one. What does that say? Okay, let's go back to the complete problem statement now. After successfully doing this, and the little tape command, I know it doesn't look, you got to put the brackets around it, but it's A times I equals the right hand side. We are now asked to do some special cases. Voltage zero, resistors one, voltage 100, resistors one. So let's put these special cases that were requested here and maybe get to the uh, graph that was asked for. So case one is voltage equal to zero and the current equal that. And let's, well, we can print them out that way. All right, you ready? Let's publish. Now, uh-oh, it looks like something's gone wrong. We've got zero currents here. Or is zero currents an acceptable answer? This is an electric circuit with no battery in it. It's like your computer when the power, when, when, when like the battery's drained, it's just like a, a paperweight. So don't you agree when you're not hooked up to the, to, the, to the switch and when your battery is dead, your computer does nothing? Isn't actually, rather than something went wrong, isn't that the physically expected answer for this case? And it's my favorite because it's ground level. What happens when nothing's happening? And then you start going, well, what happens if you put a little bit of voltage and things on it? And so we now go to case two and it's easy. The easiest probably to copy and paste, copy, paste. Case two is put 100 volts. Now we expect some action. That? There we go, case one. Looked odd at first, but actually, it actually makes complete physical sense and it's a good test. Case two now is you get. 50, 50, none, 50, 50, and 100. Um, let us, does that make it small? I want to make it small. small. Oops, I don't want that. Yeah. Can I grab its little corners and make it put two things up at once? I can't grab its corners. Dang it, I want to go back. I'm, I want the physical picture simultaneously up with this thing, and I don't know how to do it. Is there, or is that way you drive, make it small? There, oh, there's any small, okay. And we want to make this one small. All right. Let's look at this answer in relationship to the physical picture. There. And there. Let's look at this. Let's look at this together. 
Now, do you like the fact that current one and current two are the same numbers? Current six came into here and it needed to split. <clears throat> the path to R1 and R2 were identical. So you'd expect it to split half and half. And because of that symmetry, it is, it therefore forming the same voltage across these things, don't you think that R3 has no applied voltage? Like R3 would probably we have no voltage, so wouldn't the volt R3 be zero? And then these things recombine 50-50, and, and you agree that I6 should be 100, because 50 and 50 came back in to make 100. So based on the physical picture, I think I like the trends. Now, whether the absolute, now I could have typed in a two or something wrong. The magnitudes might be wrong, but I think the overall trends make complete physical sense to me. Um, let's do it again. Oh, go, we got case three. Let's do case three. Copy. Dr. Vic, real quick, um, for your function, um, and then would it be acceptable to use like the Linsolve command instead of the backslash? Linsolve, is that the same thing? Yeah, that's what I that's what I've been using in my homeworks and um, the um, the workshops. It's just essentially the same thing as the backslash, but you just put in the A and the B matrix, and it gives the X matrix. Um, I, I I can't remember. Like Jason Varsha, is that is that just the, the words for the backslash command? Well, well, let, let me let me run this case and let me check out your question. I, I'm not okay, sure okay. the answer. I'm not sure. Let me let me research out your. Let me get back to your question. Let's run this case and I want to get back to your question. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Okay, now with various resistors like that, we get all sorts of weird numbers. Now it's kind of hard to say whether they're correct. We do know that, that, that these two are supposed to add together to make that one, 23. We know they split. Well, now we know that, um, let's get back to our little picture. Oh, good. Now because resistor one Resistor two was quite a bit bigger than resistor one. What's, what's the current gonna do when it gets here and it gets a difficult path and an easy path? It's gonna take the path of, it's gonna take the, by and large, take the easier path. And it's really hard, I think, to, to criticize electric current for doing that when you do the same thing and I do the same thing, right? I mean, electric current has feelings too. You don't wanna insult that, you know, it's going through there. So the fact that current 18 was quite a, current one was quite a bit bigger than current two was the fact that it was a hell of a lot easier to get through resistor one, right? And therefore the voltage down there, therefore this should have been a positive number across here, which it was. And so anyway, it's hard to tell, but anyway, there you go. Um, I didn't get to the graph, I, do, I guess I have just enough time to answer your question. Now let's just, or, or try to answer your question. Let's go back to the MATLAB. And let's go, Doc, linear solve, just, I, I, I tell you, I'm not sure. Is that what you, linear solve, that? Okay. It's gonna be under like lin solve, so L-I-N. Oh, it's L-I-N solve? Okay. Yeah. Obviously I don't use it much, because I'm, I'm, it's like that right there. Yeah, it should be it says. Okay. So linsolve and the backslash operator more or less do the same thing. So like, like any coding problem, there are many ways to arrive at the same answer. And this is a great example of that. So I would say uh, the reason why we use the backslash operator is because it's the most general. So if you look mm -hmm. at the documentation for the backslash operator, which by itself is a function called ML divide, then you'll see that it goes through like seven different matrix solving processes and returns the most efficient one. Whereas Linsolve, I believe only uses like two or three of those matrix solving processes. So I would say that Linsolve is sort of a subset of the ML divide command. But then there are other things that you can use such as um, something called the MR divide, which is basically the forward slash, which is used for traditional division, which is a special case of matrix division for scalars. And then, um, yeah, so it, it's sort of like there are many different functions that more or less do the same thing, but with different specialties. And we're going to see that later on when we get to differential equations. Uh, we're going to be using primarily a solver called ODE45, which if you've taken vibrations, I know some of you have, you're probably very familiar with that. But 
that's one solver in a whole class of MATLAB differential equation solvers because each one has its own specialty. So there's another differential equation solver called ODE23S, which is meant for a certain class of differential equations that have a lot of very abrupt changes or are pretty sensitive to the step size. So once again, um, there are a whole bunch of MATLAB functions that do the same thing with probably just a little variation in their specialty. So this is a good example of that. Okay, so there's your question. Based on that, obviously I don't use Linsolve. Um, based on Jason's comments then, it sounds like the backslash or the ML um, left or left divide uh, command is according to that more general and, and more powerful than Linsolve. Therefore, based on that, I would recommend the backslash command and not Linsolve. Okay. Unless cool. you have special right. reason or less, less, so somehow some one of these options or something suits you. I want to use that option for something, something you could have to go way into it and knows all and you have to know all sorts of stuff about it. I'm sure you don't want to know. So, mm. okay. um, so, and the ODE solvers we come up, that's, that's an excellent example too, because there's like, a, I don't know, let's see, eight or 10 of them, at least I can think of for sort of different applications. So we're just going to mainly use the bread and butter one, the day in, day out, that's an ODE four or five. That's going to be our bread and butter, just like the backslash commands, our bread and butter here. That's our, that's our go-to solver day in, day out, unless you have a special thing. So, ODE 4.5, the backslash, and those are going to be two of the two of the top couple commands out of this course that I hope you're really good with. The backslash, solving linear equations. The backslash should be right up there, one of your most important commands, if maybe the single most important command in that lab. And but let me say something about what you did there. <clears throat> you know, you listened to what I did, but you went exploring on your own, and and I I. I'm not ever going to discourage exploring and, and doing something other than the professor said, um, but just be careful, you know, make sure you don't, and that last like you did there. So I, I encourage exploration. Um, I'm glad you brought up that question, but uh, be careful when you explore on your own, make sure you know what you're doing. Don't Thank you. Don't get lost in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I hope I'm not ex discouraging exploration and, you know, questioning and doing something other than the professor told you, you know, I, I hope that's, I mean, that's a good, that's a good attitude to instill in you, you young folks to, you know, try to pay attention to what the professor did, but then, you know, continue the exploration on your own. I think that's a good combination right there. Okay. Um, stop share. Let's look at you all 58. How many mo at the most were on this class at the, with the most? Did, did you look? No, I, I didn't pay attention. I was involved with this problem. Um, how many chats do we get? Do we get a lot of chats? No. I saw 81 people at one point. Okay, 81. Yeah, I, I didn't. I got, you know, I get involved with the problem. I, I love the physics and the problem. And I, I mean to look down. I mean to sort of record how many people are on there every day. And I forgot this time. So 80, 81 or something like that. Okay. 81 out of 140. You know, it's whatever. It's a little over half. It's not great, but it's okay. Oh yeah, I just completely forgot on a very unrelated note. Um, I curved everyone's workshop four scores by like one third or what, 33% because the third problem asks you guys to plot something like plot the concentration profile and that was supposed to be done via the F plot command. So just the plot command with an F in front of it. I don't remember if we learned it or not, but I don't think we did. So yeah, we have. Um, I, I gave you all the benefit of the doubt and then just curved your grades up, up to a max of 100 based on that. So if your Canvas grade is higher than your MATLAB grader grade, then um, that is a normal discrepancy. Yeah, we, we have covered that, but most of the time we use the normal plot command, but I've used it oh, a couple times this semester. I have to look back at the details where I used it. I've seen them using it 